People who work in the league who have to prepare in advance are mulling over Joel Embiid potentially coming to market. Whether that's true or not, I mean, Josh Harris can come on this podcast and deny it if he wants, but the fact people are talking about it is not good. It's a symptom of where they are. That is a quote from Brian Windhorst of ESPN on his podcast recently, talking about the possibility that Joel Embiid could be on the move at some point and be traded away from the Philadelphia 76ers. So that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. The trade rumors, what would actually have to happen in order for them to trade him, whether it's a good idea and what the benefit would actually be of making this move. Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker. And as I said, we're gonna be talking about some Joel Embiid trade rumors in today's video. Now, obviously he can't be traded until the off season because the trade deadline just passed, but there are some really interesting things coming out about the possibility ability that he could be traded and so that's what we're going to talk about today so for me what Windhorst is saying here in this podcast is essentially the beginning of possible trade rumors it's not anything coming out from the Sixers specifically there aren't any internal reports of saying that they want to trade him but there's some very clear public as well as private discontent between Embiid and the Sixers to what extent obviously we don't know but considering the way this team season has gone and how him and Ben Simmons have coexisted or how they've struggled to coexist over the last couple of seasons definitely points to the possibility that maybe this offseason specifically Embiid could be on the move. Now to be fair they did just beat the Clippers at home last night and Embiid and Simmons both played really well but that one game doesn't solve what has been an almost two year problem now at this point and honestly I don't necessarily think that it's an issue in terms of Ben Simmons and Embiid can't play together. I think there's a, definitely a way that you can make it work, but it's more so about how this team can optimally play and whether or not both of these guys would even want to sacrifice their own games to coexist together. Because again, I do think it's possible, but are we at this point now with this team where they both know how good they are, they're both to the point in their careers where they understand how good they could be individually. So are they going to openly sacrifice, whether it be money or just further opportunities or just more responsibility to coexist and to make this work? I think we're probably too far into their respective careers for this now. I mean, early Earlier on in their careers, it was working a little bit better, but lately, whenever one of them is out, the other always plays better, and then typically as a team, when Embiid is out, this team just aesthetically looks better, whether they play better or not. Having Simmons running everything, getting up and down the floor definitely looks better. You guys probably already know all of these things, so let's talk about the trade stuff specifically. So for me, I don't think that they're necessarily close at all to thinking about an Embiid trade, but there are a couple of dominoes that if they fall, could push them in the direction of at least considering this, and then we'll get to why this would potentially benefit them. So if we get to the postseason this year, and as of right now, the Sixers would not have home court advantage in the first round, which is a huge deal for them because they've been really good at home and not very good at all on the road. If they were to lose A in the first round of the postseason or get to the second round, but look not very good and, and have a disappointing finish in the second round and lose in like five games, then they're going to have to really, really consider a couple of things. Not only a possible Embiid trade, which I think is the guy that they would probably choose to move on from here, but also firing Brett Brown as head coach. And those would be the two dominoes. If there's playoff disappointment and Brett Brown gets fired, I think you can start to ramp up the possible Joel Embiid trade stuff. Now, in terms of, of the team itself, I don't know if Embiid would be the guy that they would look to trade because he does mean a lot to the city and he is the process. But from, from a logical standpoint, if you're just looking at it, it would make more sense to trade him. He is more injury prone. He is older. He is a big guy. And Simmons, if you can fit a team around him, fits a little bit more what the NBA is now than what Embiid does. So if it came down to choosing one, I would imagine that if they were going that route and actually thinking about it long term, Embiid would be the guy that they would move. Now, why would this make sense for them? Why would this benefit them? Because this is a very expensive team. That's the main thing. They've put themselves in this situation, whether it be Elton Brand or Colangelo and you know everybody that's taken over since Hinky got canned everything has pretty much gone downhill from a roster construction standpoint, whether it be trading away Covington and Sarich for Jimmy Butler, who is now Josh Richardson, and then bringing in Tobias Harris and losing shooters like Landry Shaman, and then bringing in Al Horford in the offseason. Pretty much every move has been an incorrect one. And now they have a roster that's a fifth seed that is very expensive, is going to be in the luxury tax 
for the foreseeable future because they have guys like Simmons, who's going to be on a max, Embiid, who is on a max, Harris, who is on a max, and Al Horford, who's on a big contract. And then you have to fill out the rest of the roster, obviously. So there's some big salaries on this group and they're going to be in the luxury tax for a while. And if you're doing that and you're, and you're paying for a team like that and they're finishing at the fifth seed, suddenly you're going to have to look at some things and be like, okay, how can we change this? How can we get out of this? And again, I think an MB trade is something that they would look to pretty quickly down their list of options. Now, this would be a very Sixers front office thing to do to have gotten to this point where they have struggled so much to build a team around these two guys and not have enough shooting around them to the point where they have to trade away Embiid to to you know take away some of the financial responsibilities. That'd be a very Sixers front office thing to do, but I, I think that's probably where they're at at this point, again, assuming they have a negative playoff experience this season. They could move Embiid for some younger assets, some shooting, start to build the team around Simmons, wait for Horford to come off his deal. They'd still have Harris and Richardson and hopefully some other shooters. And maybe that team could do something down the road. And again, you're getting value back for Embiid. Now, honestly, this isn't a great solution. And ideally, a player as talented as Joel Embiid, you would keep him and you would have a good roster fit. But again, it's not just the on the court stuff, but it's financial as well. And things could always change. We could get to the postseason. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this team made the conference finals or maybe even the finals because they do have that talent. And they're one of the teams that when we get to the postseason, if they're playing well, they could start playing better in the postseason than they did in the regular season because their style fits what typically happens in the playoffs a little bit better than it does in the regular season. But at the end of the day, for me, what these rumors and what this Philadelphia 76ers season to this point means as it relates to Joel Embiid is we've never been closer to them actually trading away Joel Embiid than we are right now. I'm not saying that it's all that likely. I still think that it's something that is not even remotely being considered by them, but we're inching closer and closer. I'd say at this point, we're probably at about a 10% chance of him being traded in the off season. And if we start having, you know, we get to the point where they're not playing well at all in the postseason, maybe we inch up towards 30, maybe even 40% chance that they move him in the off season. And I understand that Sixers fans probably don't wanna hear this and they're thinking there's no way that they're gonna move him. At some point, you can't just stick with the same thing over and over, right? And just trying to mix and match the pieces around these two guys. At some point, you have to realize this team's going to be really expensive. They're not playing well. A fifth seed isn't nearly good enough for a team of this talent level. So changes need to be made, whether it's Brett Brown or whether it's changes in the front office or whether it is a potential MB trade or all of these things, because this is a franchise that has put so much into this, right? They, they put all this losing and all these resources into building up a championship level team into getting two cornerstone players players and at a certain point things have to work out and there has to be a switch that is flipped and we just haven't seen that from them this season or at any point really over the last few since they went on that nice run to make the postseason the first time a couple years ago which also by the way most of it happened without Embiid and that was with Simmons running the show in his first true season so things as always aren't great in Philadelphia at the moment there are opportunities for them to turn this around but uh, these trade rumors for Joel Embiid are not ideal. Now, again, these are kind of like the beginning of trade rumors because this is just Windhorse essentially saying people are talking about it, not necessarily the Sixers, but teams around the league are preparing for what a Joel Embiid trade would look like, whether it's the price, whether it's whatever pieces they would have to get together to make that move. There are definitely some teams that are getting together a plan that are circling the wagons and saying, hey, maybe this guy's going to come available, potentially the Hawks, potentially the Knicks, potentially the Warriors. There are teams with a ton of assets that they could definitely throw at the Sixers if they're interested, depending on what the price is for him with you know his health and all the other issues that potentially come with him. He is, when healthy and when right, one of probably the best seven players in the entire league when he's got it going and when he's healthy. So there is going to be a huge, huge market for them if the Sixers for him if the Sixers did decide to move on and I'm excited like maybe this is the guy right like we talk about this all the time who's going to be the next star to ask out maybe Embiid is the next guy to say eh I'm not really that happy in Philly maybe I should try my luck somewhere else and there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching once again my name is Sucker if you missed any of my previous videos then be sure to check out the boxes on screen thanks again and I'll see you all next time